okay yesterday classes uh, we have uh, read regarding that um, regarding this var const and uh, let right and also we have discussed difference between var const and let apart from that i have shown you how we are going to install the node js all these things now let's go today we'll start from the typescript <coughs> as i told earlier like typescript is a superset of javascript means the the typescript is written top of the javascript when you are going to write in typescript what happen finally your code is going to convert to type, uh, javascript only means browser is only able to understand javascript due to that typescript is giving a, uh, a like functionality where you can go and write the oops programming object oriented programming structure whereas when you actually the typescript is going to compile that time it's converting into javascript the same way if you want to work on javascript like uh, suppose you are creating an html css or javascript that is a file you have to create right the same as if you want to create any file in typescript then you have to create suppose i'm giving app.ts remember .ts is the extension for typescript ts stand for typescript okay let me go and uh, create some program i will going to start from one by one you have to write some program we will understand about the typescript the same way a declare a variable in typescript we have to use let let is used to create a variable let then suppose the name we are giving javascript suppose john right what you can see here the red color is displaying it's saying that some error is coming here okay why the error is coming it's saying due to typescript you cannot redeclare block scope variable name uh, name was declared here okay what about all these things let me go and declare one variable okay to declare a variable in javascript we are using var variable name equal to value right this is our structure same way let variable name equal to value but due to your work on the typescript your main concept will be you have to work on you have to declare a type okay the type you have to specify means the structure will be let variable name type equal to value got it means the in previous what will do suppose variable name one equal to value this is the old way Okay, this is the previous way but in case of new typescript what you need to do you have to give the variable name then the data type here you can see we have a concept of data type okay you have a concept of data type then you have to understand what different different type of data type in typescript okay you clear right the things in uh, javascript we are declaring same way like let or var variable name value if you go and declare any variable in typescript then what you need to do you have to specify the type to specify the type you need to do this way <clears throat> variable name colon data type equal to value clear let me go and discuss about first the data type. Different data type, there is a different, different type of data type in our uh, JavaScript, uh, in our TypeScript. First one is, first TypeScript will be, first one will be string. You know, the string means it's a group of character.
Group character. Okay, means if anything going to return double quote or single quote, we call as a string. <coughs> in any data you want to store in a string format, character format, it's a string. Like your name, address, all these things is belongs to string, right? Second one is number. Number means numeric. Numeric means, as you all you know, there is two different type of numeric. One is whole number, one is fractional number. Means, whole number means, it will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, etc. Fractional number means, suppose 1.2, 2.3, 4.5, etc. Got it? Means, if you want to store any number as a whole number means it's a norm there is no uh, floating point means no fractional number it's a one two three four five if you want to store a number in a suppose you want to store a number in a decimal places then you have to store this 1.2 2.3 something and this both number will accept positive as well as the negative means you can go for plus one by default one means plus right if suppose you have to give a minus two also it's going to work okay so what we learn first we have learned number type then we'll first we learn string type second we'll learn the number types right <coughs> next go and discover next other type called boolean Boolean means, as I told earlier, it will be two value, okay, either true or false. Okay. Boolean means, at least it will be true or false. True means, it will be one, okay, false means, it will be zero. Okay. These are the letter type. Second one, let's go for fourth one. Fourth one is the object type. What is object type? Object type means, if you are known the programming background, object type means it's a group of variable. It's not an array, sorry. It's not an array. It's a group of variable. Object type I'm going to discuss. One I'm going to discuss all these things. Object type type where you're going to define an object okay don't uh, just ignore now as of now this object type i'll go to discuss this object type later these are the type basically we're using in our typescript okay let me go and define some variable and log it okay so define a variable suppose let suppose um, username string equal to admin okay what i did it here i have defined a variable called username and type is string value is admin same way let me defend user age is user age is number and type will be value will be suppose 18 just imagine the same thing we are declaring in uh, javascript but the only thing is different is the type okay then you will ask me what is the difference between because here i am not using any type right but here i am using the type then what will happen uh, if i don't define a type the problem is <clears throat> as i told earlier if you are not defining the type in the earlier example let me show that one first In the earlier example, I can show you like uh, the same age variable we declared uh, yesterday. So the same age variable initially there is nothing will be there. It's undefined. Then you assign a integer a string. Then you assign a boolean. Again you assign an integer. You can assign anything into a variable. Here 
the application is not throwing an error because you are defining age as anonymous type anonymous type means there is no type is there whatever value you're going to assign the type is going to assign but to solve this kind of problem in our your programming we are using the concept of this data type means if you will go and change username to suppose you are assigning again username to one two three you can see the error you can see that error what is saying there if you mouse over uh, the number is not assigned to type string you got my point but if you go to this variable.html you can see i can assign html to string a string i can assign to html to number all a uh, boolean number etc that is the one of the best advantages of typescript means when you declare a variable with a type then you are saying to the compiler okay my username is this type means it may be any type then what will happen if anyone going in further and change the value of the value of the variable apart from this type it's going to throw an error clear that is the benefit of declaring this type of type the same way let me go and user age equal to suppose xyz you can see that it's saying user age the type string is not assignable to a type number what is saying the user is due to is defined as a number you cannot assign this user age as a string clear let me go and uh, log this one because you can see in you are using console.log log and we're going to refresh this one it's going to work right but typescript as i told why it's worked because browser only understand this javascript the browser don't understand the concept of TypeScript. Okay, now what we'll do? We have to fast convert this script, the TypeScript to JavaScript. Then we will run this JavaScript inside a browser. You got my point? Because as I told you yesterday, browser don't know about the JavaScript. Don't know about sorry. Don't know about the TypeScript. The browser only knows the JavaScript. Okay but the typescript whatever you return what happening the typescript first we have to convert this typescript to javascript then use that javascript in our html clear now just imagine i am just doing console.log suppose uh, username uh, username I'll, I'll discuss all these things in just a minute. Let me print username and user age. Okay. But it means I have declared two variables. I just need to print it. Okay. <clears throat> now, how I go and execute this one to convert to JavaScript, then I will going to use the JavaScript program for that. What you will do in the Visual Studio, open, click on this terminal, open, just click on new terminal or click it here, terminal, new terminal. It's automatically is going to open your application path, wherever your application is there, right? Then what you need to write, you have to write tsc remember this tag when remember this command tsc typescript compiler then give the file name app.ts then just click enter once you click enter what will happen you can see that here automatically the another app.js file got created we'll go inside that we'll discuss all these things what it's happened once you type tsc app.ts then what will happen 
the TypeScript compiler is going to compile this app.ts and convert this app.ts to app.js. As I told, TypeScript is not going to work directly to the browser. You have to first convert to this TypeScript, then uh, convert this TypeScript to JavaScript, then use that JavaScript in your program, right? For that reason, you have to do TSC, the TypeScript compiler space, give the file name. What it does, it will automatically convert this file to JavaScript. Now, there is two way you can run this JavaScript. One is, you can go here, okay, you can click on new file, just case suppose, uh, app.html, or index.html, just mean index.html. Okay. Here I will do uh, suppose then here script Okay, so you I have created one HTML file inside the HTML file. I have imported this app.js file means whatever is going to convert from app.ts, it's converting app.js. Then I have used this, this app.js inside my application. If I go and run this ts file, okay, the index.js file, if I go inspect, you can see that. You can see that you can able to see username admin user age 18. Then you have a question like if any time I'll go and do some changes, then then I need to compile the answer is yes. Any time, suppose just example, let me do and let me add here. Suppose user gender. Okay. User gender will be string. Suppose you have defined suppose uh, male. Just example male. Okay. Then you have to go and print it. So user uh, gender. I print this gender. I'll explain all these things. Just to bear with me. Then I save it. If I go and refresh, are you able to see the user uh, gender? No. Why? Because whatever changes you did, again you will go. Okay, again you will go and do the compilation. Once you compiled, what happened? Now the changes is going to reflect in JS file. If you go it here and refresh, you can able to see the user gender. Means whatever changes you will do, whatever changes you will do in your TS file, your responsibility will be you have to fast compile, means you have to use this TS compiler. First compile this one, after compiling, then your code is going to work here. Okay, that is the one thing. Second thing, as I told, if you want to see the output of your JavaScript, whatever you written, whatever is compiled to JavaScript, you have two options. One option is you can you can create an index.html file, you have to create one HTML file, inside that HTML file, you can go and import that file. Once you import that file, what will happen? Based on your logic, whatever written is going to display, whatever is written inside the code is going to display. Another way, if you want to test, that is a simple one, you have to use node, you have to write the command node, then app.js. What will happen if you go and write node app.js, it will going to compile that this this one and going to give you this data. But I, I already recommended go and use this HTML because here you cannot call a function, you cannot do a lot of things. Okay, but this is just for a execution of a JavaScript file. Means 
I am saying in the two way you can run the JavaScript. One is you can use node space the file name. You can get all the whatever the code is executing. Otherwise, just create HTML file. In HTML file and whatever you have to import the TypeScript using the script and SRC, then it's going to work. Let me explain this one. What is this tag? Means suppose in the last class we have learned about the script tag. Means if you are going to work on a script, then you have to use a script tag. The same way in HTML, if you want to go and import the external script, because these are the internal script, right? These are the internal script because you are writing a script inside the HTML page. But if you want to use the external uh, um, like script in your application then you have to use script tag then src src stand for source source equal to fp.js means what you are uh, saying to the browser okay go and import import this fp.js to our html as a script got it this is the use of script now if if you people will try this one like tsc and app.js then it's not going to work in your system you ask how it's not going to work system the point will be just a second tsc app.ts if you go and compile it it's if you type it's saying that tsc is the unknown command or something error is going to come why it will come because you need to install this tsc compiler in your local machine okay yesterday you have installed the typescript yesterday you have installed the node sheet, uh, node.js sorry yesterday you have installed the node.js but to run the typescript we require this typescript compiler to install the typescript compiler just go and in the command prompt write <coughs> npm install type n g type script what you'll do you go to your uh, uh, your any open your command prompt any command prompt and go and write this one npm install hyphen g type script let me explain one by one okay so going forward if you are going to work on react or angular then you have to use this npm command okay let me explain what is npm what is install g and typescript if you work from suppose if you know the java or if you know the csr in csr we are using something called nuget package manager dot net means suppose you want to install any external package or external library to your to your application then you are using nuget package in same as java i think you are using marvel or something like that I, I am not sure about that you are using marvel for installing the third party library in same case in your local machine suppose you want to install any kind of a third party library or any kind of a third party resource in your application then you have to use npm npm stands for node package manager npm node start for node package manager okay then i'll we'll ask where this npm is exist if you open this npm registry okay this is the registry for your registry for your application just example if i go and source typescript here then what will happen you can see just a second. This is a TypeScript. Means what this NPM is a library for all the JavaScript code. Means all the JavaScript means whatever script you are creating, that script is going to store here. For that reason, what I am saying to the my system, do one thing, go and install NPM install node package manager install that TypeScript. Let me change it. You have to understand. NPM install 
node package manager install typescript means i need to install the typescript in my machine in a global preference hyphen g means stand for global hyphen g means global installation means all the time you no need to install this typescript when you write typescript programming once you install a typescript global automatically what will happen this tsc command is available for you okay always remember that is the use of slash hyphen g means you are installing in a global mode means by default it's going to access for all the users the same way you have to understand this npm install typescript is used to install the typescript in your machine in global preference okay you have to learn all these things later if you know if you're going to join this um, uh, angular or react class in that time we're going to explain much more about this or how npm and how you can create your own library in that case okay forgot about that let me go and show you after you install this npm uh, install typescript g then you can able to compile your typescript to javascript okay now let's go and see discuss about what it's compiled okay what it's compiled means after converting from ts to js what's actual happened okay let me go and click on this js okay you people seeing any difference okay you are seeing any difference okay only difference is you can see here i have declared username equal to string and user age number user gender string but what happened when it is compiled to javascript okay when it is compiled to javascript then what happened it starts plainly converting to var means as i told finally your typescript is going to convert into javascript means whatever the features is used in javascript that is going to work only due to that what happening this string number all these all these things are typescript driven when typescript is it is giving a chance where you go and write your pure object, object oriented programming but when this code is going to convert in javascript it will going to work in a basic way got it means whatever you written here if you want to convert into javascript then it's going to convert in that way you can see there is no string no this all these things now you'll ask then why i need to because i can use all these things right directly why, why i need to go and write all these things more syntax here the answer is typescript is not going to say you like how the javascript work it's saying that how you can write your structural programming just example suppose i am creating one function okay so function add now as it uh, earlier discuss in javascript either you can pass norm1 comma norm2 for example now imagine in norm1 and norm2 i can pass number i can pass string i can pass boolean i can pass anything right in that case wh what will happen you have to take care what is the type of value you should have to pass means after getting the value you have to check the type of the value then you have to do an operation but if i am doing all these things what will do i will specify the type of the parameter suppose number 1 should be number and number 2 should be number means what will happen if i go and call this add it's uh, is saying me okay just pass this number 1 as a number number 2 as a number means i will pass 1 and 2 same way if i go and add another node for if i are going to pass x y z and 1 2 3 you can see that is saying x y z is a number type the benefit of a typescript is is not going to do anything apart from javascript whatever javascript is doing the same thing typescript also doing the only difference is like it's giving a way how you can go and write a structure programming 
means whatever you are going to define here it should be type it should be purely calling on all, all these things okay that is the basic difference between javascript and a typescript okay <clears throat> clear let me go and uh, discuss about this one this line okay you all know that log means if you want to log something then you have to use the console log like like your printf printf and console dot write line or uh, print line in java all these things right the same way if you want to display the username okay let me go and discuss this line very deeply you have to understand all these things guys if you have any doubt please ask me I clear now. Okay. Let me go. What is my output? Should I expected? I expected username colon admin user age colon eighteen user gender colon male or female whatever. Okay. Now I have a variable. I have a variable called username. And I want to display that variable in output window here. Okay. I have a variable and just a second. I have a variable and I want to display that variable in output window. What I did it here, you have different different way you can do that to display variable. Okay, let me see that. The first way will be you can simple write, you know, to write a uh, suppose um, string as I discussed we have to use a double quote then username will go and plus username it's called string concatenation what happened this is this is your string and you want to add another data entry there like username is just one then plus username the same way what you can there is another way is you will use this back operator this one okay then what will do you will use username in any places if you want to add any variable or any dynamic data you have to use this dollar symbol curly bracket and pass the username okay forward about this that's fine you have two way one is you can do the string concatenation this is also one type of string concatenation which is a modern way means you want to suppose you are suppose you want to display the user uh, age again then you have to go plus then user age then you have to do plus then user age instead of doing that in same string what you'll do suppose you'll do space user age dollar symbol call it back and start call it back and end then you have to use user age both these two line both these two line are equal there is no difference you can use this string concatenation otherwise you can use this type of interpolation like you have to use this dollar and all this thing. both are going to equal it's up to you how you can go and use this one i always prefer go and use this down one this one don't use this one it's plus plus all this thing don't need to use if any places you want to display variable inside a string just go and use this dollar symbol call back at start call back at end here you have to give the variable name is going to append to the string okay that i'm saying these two are the basic fundamentals to bind a string value to a st any of the value then you have to you have two uh, preference i am always referred you have to use this last one okay clear <coughs> let me go as we discussed earlier we have string type and number type and boolean type all this type right we have declared here the string type user type and boolean type let me go and define one object type okay what is the object type in javascript 
the object means object you know it's a in javascript the object means it's a group of group of information about a specific uh, like entity let me show you something you can see i have defined username user age user gender in the different different variable now what i need to do let me combine this three and give a unique name in that case there is a concept called object type okay. i'll explain let me do one by one first now object type let me decide let employee equal to name Let me show you something here. What happened? You can see that if you go and compare these two examples, here I have declared a three variable to give a different, different name. What happened? The same variable I group it. What I group it? I have created a variable called employee. Inside employee, I have declared these three variables. Okay. In this three variable, I have defined name, age, and gender. Then you will ask, what is the benefit of this one? What is the benefit of this one over to this data? The first benefit will be, you are getting a, suppose you want to access the username, user, gender, and all these things, you have to go and access the individual. Now, just imagine, I will, I will say that, create an array the array is going to store employee name age and gender what will do you will go just i am giving an example suppose i will say store an data of employee you will go and create let both employees equal to you will give the name age suppose you will give name age and suppose gender Right. But the problem is you can only add the data in single single data, right? Single way. But what I try to do it here, if I will create an object, if I going to create an object, and that object I can I can add inside this element. Means if I'll tell you just create a list of employees just create the list of employee then you each and every employee contain their own attribute own attribute means name age gender phone number etc means what i'm trying to say it here if you will create a group of variables always remember if you want to create a group of variables or group of property in a in in a name or in a, if you create a group of property or group of variable inside a section, we call as a object. Means this employee is going to store name, age, and gender. This is also one of the declaration, but this is a group of declaration. Means you are going to store the employee information inside this employee object. In future, if you're going to access this name, age, or gender, then you will simply go and write console.log employee dot name means employee is the object this object contain the attribute called name means let me simple specify all these things employee is an object this name is or gender or attributes. Guys, I know it's different different stuff. You have to understand all these things. The same way in Java or C sharp or any programming language you define a class, 
the same way in javascript i'm talking about javascript it's not typescript in javascript if you are going to define any type of object then you will decide you then you have to go and declare this type of structure name age and gender what is this this object is a group of variable where you are going to access the individual one suppose <coughs> you want to access the age instead of name go and simply use age but gender then use gender now you will ask the what is the actual benefit of that let me show you actual benefit Suppose you are developing an application and that application you are storing the employee information. Just example, you are storing the employee information database. Now you want to access the employee information. Then in your database, you are storing your different different columns of employee name, address, gender, ID, etc. etc. storing. When database is going to give the data, it will give you employee information, right? Then if you want to go to bind that data to your JavaScript object then you require this kind of a declaration okay this is called javascript object now this is the old way old way means you have to go and declare this kind of structure in old javascript but how we can go and create this type of structure in typescript okay let me go and discuss something called interface Let me go and discuss about the interface. Now, what I'll do the interface? Let me define one interface. Suppose interface I employee. Let me define name as string, age as number, and gender as string. Okay. What I did, I have declared our interface. Interface means, I think if you know in JavaScript, interface means it's a pseudo class. Pseudo class means you are just going to define all the attribute of your class. Okay, we'll go all discuss all these things. I have declared our interface, and interface contain these three attribute. One is name, age, and gender. What I did, I have declared here name a string type age number type gender string type okay now what will happen what is the benefit of this one let me create a group of let me create a group of employee like let me go and create let employees equal to i employee type so, array let me show you what I am doing, doing it here. As I extra uh, decide, like define an array. Do we discuss array? No, right? Sorry. Ah, yes, we already discussed about array in JavaScript, right? Right, right. Let me show you. Suppose I want to dis, uh, decide, uh, I want to declare a list of employee. Now, each and every employee should contain this name, age, and gender. And this name should be string, age should be number, and gender should be string. In that case, just show this example. Due to these all are the uh, attributes there, but you can change the different, different type of the attribute, right? If you age, you can assign the string also, you can age the boolean also. But if you go, and declare this employee as an interface you have to declare all the attribute inside this interface and suppose you want to add any item to this array then you have to go simply employee employees and push we know the push uh, command one right then it's give you access you have to enter the age 18 the gender suppose female and name equal to suppose xyz means you can see that i have created a group i have created a object i have created an interface called i employee okay and declare all the attribute inside this 
and using this interface in the array and make sure whatever data you are going to add into this array this data should be employee type i employee type and you specify that the name is a string age is a number gender is a string the same way if i go and change it here x y z is going to throw me an error but here the normal declaration of javascript you can see that we are not using any kind of type right here we are using the concept of type what i am trying to say it here in your programming if you are to declare a object type object type then go the concept of interface interface means you go and create a pseudo object or pseudo class pseudo class means the there is nothing will be inside the class only you have to go and declare about the variables whatever variables is inside this you have to go and declare all these things that is the use of interface now you will ask me why this interface is required as i told suppose you are retrieving some employee information from a database in that case what you need to do in your programming you have to create a interface that and the interface whatever key inside the interface should be match with your api response now what will happen whatever data will come from this rest uh, api is going to bind to this interface I know guys these all are different different structure because this is a programming uh, we have to learn these are the basic structure we have to follow okay the things will be if you go and create this interface whatever data will come from the api is go and bind to each and every attribute then you will go and easily access by this one the only benefit of this interface or using the typescript means it's going to give you each and every attribute by its type that is the use of interface the same way also you can do it here but here you are not declaring any type of the variable okay that is the use of the interface that is if you are going to the same way if you go and declare this kind of interface you have to use the interface keyword and the interface name the curly bracket start curly bracket end inside that you have to declare all these different different types because people if you go and use this one if you are going to write program in react or angular in that case we require this interface basically this is the basic use of interface in the programming as you know in typescript you don't require this thing because this is not going to solve your problem because if you are going to use this typescript in angular or react that time you require all this stuff because here we don't have any use cases due to that you are maybe not able to understand all these things but just understand this interface is a pseudo class we are going to declare all the attribute with type and this type this interface is going to data binding from api to your local then whatever data will come from your api is going to bind to this one and you will go and use this attribute in your program this is all about your interfaces okay you can see here everywhere in typescript we are go and define the type means in interface where whatever variable we are adding we are define the type if you are going to declare any array also we are declaring a type means if you declare anything you can assign as a type here what i did i have declared a employees as a uh, array and the type is i employee okay the same way i have declared is a name is here i can declare as i employee I mean, you can declare anything and assign that one is a type also okay if you people go and uh, join this java uh, like angular or react class then you will know that what is the real time use of this one this interface all this this is the basic stuff you have to know for the typescript how to declare all these things but actual implementation you will do in the javascript in angular or typescript okay anyone any question on this regarding this uh, uh, like employee or all these things let me know i'll go to next one all clear okay great so what we learn we have learned about how to declare a variable how to assign a data type 
how, how to do the string concatenation and how to declare an object and how to declare a interface in in your typescript okay let me go and de uh, define a function in javascript okay a function To declare a function JavaScript, you know we have to use the function keyword. In JavaScript, we have to use function suppose add, and you have to pass number one, number two, then you have to do your work. This is the basic syntax of a function, right? In JavaScript. But if you are to declare a function in the uh, TypeScript, there is no function keyword. There is no function keyword you have to use. What you need to do? You will do okay, no function keyword means you, you can use function keyword. There is no meaning you can use function keyword, but we are not we are not going to use this function keyword in our TypeScript. What you need to do? Let me define let add equal to Let me show you something. Let's do it. okay you can see okay, let me show you different different way to declare a function in typescript Okay, guys, Let, let's show you. These are the three different way you can declare a function in TypeScript. One is the traditional way you have to use the function keyword, add, you have to pass the parameters. Okay. Second one, let's decide a, let add to is a variable name, means a function name, and you have to use the function keyword, same thing. The third one is that called as a lambda function lambda function lambda function here you are using this arrow symbol okay here what you did you have declared you declare a very function called r3 instead of using this function keyword you just declare two uh, parameter num1 num2 now you have declared this equal to greater than then start if any places if you see equal to greater than symbol you have to remember that this is a lambda function means this means whatever is this one the same as this one same also this one the only difference is now modern javascript we are writing instead of writing this function keyword we are writing this greater than equal to symbol lambda function keyword okay this is all about a function declaration there is nothing difference all are looks equal only difference is you without using the function keyword if you want to declare a if you declare a function then you have to use this lambda function lambda means the equal to greater than function otherwise all will be treated as equal okay now the task for you like uh, the task will be let me add it here i'll share this file immediately to all of you 
just first we will be create a function create a function second will be it will accept three param first two param will be number last one is character or string based on the last one it's a operator means operator means it will be plus minus or divisible and multiplication means what you need to do if you want to create a function in that function you have to pass three parameter num1 num2 and operator based on the operator you need to display the output if it's a plus display plus if it's a minus display minus if it's a multiplication display multiplication if if you pass apart from all these four you will display that invalid operation okay you have to display that invalid operation apart from that you have to use this lambda function okay that is your task for tomorrow anyone any question before wind up these things any question okay thank you all thank you for your time see you tomorrow bye